Hello songbirds, it's Kerry Ho from the songbirdtree.com where we get grounded, take flight and sing. Welcome to episode 46 of the live stream. This is Performance Highs and Lows. It's a live tea time with the wonderful Kathy Alexander from Sing Adaptive and myself. And we're actually going to be talking about um, the things that we learned and the things that we actually went through to put on our recent live stream concert um, that we did uh, at the end of April this year. Now before I get Kathy on and, and for that chat, let me just uh, quickly tell you about a free video course um, that you really should get your hands on um, if you want to learn how to sing in mixed voice. So how to sing in mixed voice, my free mini video course is available um, at the link that's coming up on the screen below, but also in the description box below as well. Um, so make sure if you don't have that already, just click on that link in the description box and you'll be able to get that um, straight away. Sent to you four videos that will get you started to um, start singing in a beautifully connected mixed voice. Okay, so that is that. Now I'm going to welcome Kathy Alexander for our episode 46 performance highs and lows. Hey, Kathy, you've got your tea. I love it. <laughs> I do. Hi, Carrie. Good to see you again. Virtually, yes. as always. <laughs> yes, I know, because you're so far away from me. When are you coming to Melbourne? Seriously, come on. Okay, as after soon COVID, as I possibly after can. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to hold you to that one. All right. So guys, welcome um, to Kathy. Kathy is a uh, contemporary voice specialist and um, voice teacher. And she's also the co-founder of an incredible, I guess, educational singing platform called Singdaptive. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a minute. But um, basically, we are having tea together. That's why we were there with our teacups. And you know what? We both got like songbirds on our teacups. Can we just like show everyone? Yay! So welcome everybody um, to the live stream. Let me know what you're actually drinking. Are you drinking a cup of tea as well with us? Um, or is it coffee? Or is it something completely different? Maybe a bit stronger. I don't know. Whatever it is, um, you know, let us know in the comments what you've got. Hey Marlene, good to see you. Hello Amy, good to see you. I'm just so excited to be here with you all. All right, so for those of you who don't know, Kathy and I actually decided that we would um, do a live stream concert um, because at the time, you know, with COVID and everything, both of us didn't have any opportunity to perform. And then we actually made it happen. It actually happened on the 23rd of April, um, which was not so long ago. And we today want to relive that wonderful experience that we had together. Um, and basically glean some, some, some learning insights for you all songbirds so that you can actually come, come away with this and, and kind of have an idea, you know, what actually goes um, on when, when you want to pre prepare for any sort of performance. So whether that's an online performance or an in-person performance, what kind of things actually need to happen and, and what actually really goes on. So we're really going to open the curtain and invite you behind the curtain with us backstage, behind the scenes. Um, let us know if you have any questions along the way as well. There you go. <laughs> oh, I love it, Kathy. That was awesome. That's fantastic. Hello, Kelly. How are you going? Good to see you. Hey, Sue. Green tea for you. That is a good choice. All right. Let's do this, Kathy. Let's you ready? do it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So let's let's start with you know what did we I guess what did we go through in the pre preparation phase? I mean, what did the preparation phase look like for you, Kathy? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I, I think it always starts with what songs am I going to do, and this goes through several phases of editing. <laughs> like this, the, the first list that I wrote down and the, the final list that, that I performed wasn't the same. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and for me, that process is always about what is enjoyable to sing. Yes. What do I want to express? What, what music is on my heart that I want to share with people? Love and it. then the very practical point of what can I prepare in time? So practically speaking, yeah, that's great. the time that I have left, what can I pull off well, as it yes. were? Yeah, yes. so I think there's like choosing the songs um, and then of course um, planning how we're gonna do it. Like yeah. who's gonna, are we gonna have accompaniment or are we gonna sing with accompaniment yes. tracks and mm -hmm. who will be the accompanist and is that person free? <laughs> and yes. what space are we gonna perform in? And yeah. how are we gonna get the sound into the computer for the live stream? <laughs> so there's like a whole lot of practicalities, let yes. alone the kind of artistic preparation, you know? Yeah. yeah what about totally. you? 
Yeah, yeah, um, okay. yeah, very similar process. I mean, um, for, for me, it was definitely songs, for, you know, that I wanted to sing songs that I absolutely love to sing that I knew that um, I would just so enjoy performing. And, and, and like you sort of said, you know, songs that are on my heart in the moment, right? Um, at the same time, I kind of wanted a little bit of a coherent theme um, so that it, we could take, I guess, our audience on a bit of a journey. Um, so as I was looking at all the different songs and everything, the way I kind of culled, I guess, was, okay, does this actually fit? You know, Are there any songs that are just like screaming out a theme right here, you know? And, and, and I didn't even plan it that way, but organically, they just seemed to be you know, about some songs that were about love and then some songs that were all about sort of seizing the day and, and, and living life to the full. And then that ended up being, I guess, my two main themes. Yeah. And that worked so well. I loved your themes. Yeah. And I think that culling process, um, it was a little bit the same for me. So, yeah, I was starting to try to see what the themes were. And my two themes ended up being songs for a pandemic and the cycle of life. Yes. And then um, part of that process of picking the songs or kind of calling the songs down was also what was working well when I rehearsed with my accompanist, my wonderful, yes. delightful friend, Christy. Yes. Um, what was working well kind of cohesively between us and mm. what was feeling maybe like it was going to require a little too much time to prepare. So those ones would go out <laughs> the window. Yes. Yep. Um, nice. Yeah, so it kind of settle, settles in. Yeah, for sure. And what yeah. about, um, I mean, speaking of preparation, the thing that often gets a lot of attention for me is what I'm going to say in between the songs. Uh, Carrie, I'm yes. curious, like, how much do you prepare in advance and what's that process like for you? Oh, so when it comes to the speaking in between, that is such a good question because um, a lot of people, you know, really do wonder about that and I'm very scared of that. Um, for me, I honestly... I don't think about that until as close to the to the to the day as possible. It might even be on the actual day where I might just have a little bit of a think about it. And the reason why I do that is because I don't want to come across as robotic. I don't want to be sort of all scripted and planned. I do value, I guess, the authenticity mm -hmm. of just sort of being myself and and speaking what in the moment I feel um, I, I should I want to say, you know. Mm -hmm. But what I do tend to do is just have a really, you know, because I don't want to overthink things. Uh, for me, in performance. One of the things to avoid is overthinking because <laughs> you know how we as performers can really overthink. <laughs> Right. And, and so I do what I can to not to try not to overthink. So for me, it was like I knew I had two big main themes and they, they became our two different like sets. So I knew that was already a really good scaffolding in between. I thought to myself, OK, I might I might say something about this. And I just sort of thought it through my head and then. I let myself say whatever in the moment, honestly. So I didn't overly script it. I didn't, you know, but I did have a little bit of a think. Um, but I think one thing I would like to say about this is also in terms of speaking uh, between songs, we don't need to say too much. I think let the song speak for itself as well. Um, unless there's an actual story that you want to bring forth that will really add and enhance, that sometimes it's better to not say anything. I love that. I, I've heard... Um music teachers and voice teachers say that before and I do think that's great yeah. advice you don't have to say much really at all but yeah if you have a story to share then by all means it's part it becomes yes. part of the journey I want to yes. also add that um, for me it's similar I certainly don't script what I say but so what I do is usually the day before and a little bit on the day of um, yes. I just write down a whole bunch of notes and I, I make sure that I've done my research on every song, but I know where the song is from. That's I know right. the basic date and who, you know, I just get the stats because, you know, sometimes it just comes up and you want to say who it's by or whatever. So do your homework. Yes. I make my notes. Then I make notes on what the song means. And yes. I try to think what, what might be interesting to people that's, that's, that is my experience with the song that they would okay. feel inter interested to know. And I make lots yes. of notes. But then I just stop there and then yep. in the moment, yes. then I just let whatever comes to me come. But having written all those notes, not a script, yes. but just those notes yes. is really key for me because I feel more comfortable. I feel more free yeah. and at yeah. ease because I've done my homework. Yeah. I love that. And you and you did it so well, Kathy, can I just say? Like oh, um, you captivated us with every single word that you both sung and said. 
oh my gosh, thanks, Carrie. And and I, I mean, <laughs> well, and same to you. Like I, I, I think you just seem so kind of at ease, so authentic. And I think we're we're like we have slightly different personalities, but I think yeah. we both, you know, we were really kind of connecting together too. So I'm I was yeah. so happy with how it went. Oh yeah, absolutely. Me too. Um, and you know, I think, you know, part of the, um, I guess, preparation process was also figuring out, um, you know, all the te technical stuff, which I'm hopeless at, like I have z zero clue. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, we actually, actually, we actually had to get together quite a few times beforehand and actually run things and go, okay, hey, Kathy, how does it sound on your end? How do I sound on your end? And then you also asked me how I, how you sounded on my end and that we were just sort of testing that all the time. Um, do you want to sort of, you know, give a little bit of insight into that process that we went through? Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that we did that. We ended yes. up actually meeting in advance here online mm -hmm. using this mm -hmm software StreamYard yes like yeah. three times before we yeah. actually went into the live stream and I'm so glad that we did that and that you had the foresight and the forethought to say hey do you want to meet again and, and the one time I yeah. was like can we meet again um yes yeah so I mean the, it's amazing because it's it was new to both of us we hadn't yes. done this exact thing before so we were That's live right. streaming using a tool Carrie you're familiar with StreamYard you use it yeah. all the time yeah. and but using it to share the stage with another artist on the live stream. <laughs> and yeah, completely we had different to make thing. sure that our our voices and our pianos sounded mm. good together and sounded right mm -hmm. in the space. Mm. Now I had help with this, but you didn't. <laughs> you no. you and Belle were on your own. I had a sound engineer in my house. Yes. I live with him. He's my husband. Um, yes. <laughs> you know, um but but yeah that so that burden i didn't have to carry as much as you did mm, that technical mm. setup but yeah that was huge because we got onto Streamyard, and the first time i sang there was this hiss and you were like yes oh, kathy there's this huge hiss going on the whole time and then we were like <laughs> oh, we've got to figure that out we had to figure you know? it out yeah exactly yeah, so and i remember a lot of troubleshooting Absolutely. And I'm, I'm so glad that we did that because if we didn't, we would have then been, we would have had to deal with all these issues during the the concert for the first time. And that would have thro like thrown us off our performance, you know, but obviously things can still go wrong during, which we can talk about later, but we did what we could to mitigate any of that by pretty much simulating the experience at least two or three times beforehand. You know, one of those things was I realized that my voice was totally echoing back at me whenever I was speaking. Do you remember that? Yeah. And then we had to figure that out too. So I'm so glad we did that. And I just think one of the lesson points is if you are putting on a performance, do what you can to actually kind of simulate the real thing, you know, at least twice. Um, but as many times as you can beforehand, even like wearing the thing that, you know, the costume you're going to wear, the shoes you're going to wear <laughs> and things like that. So that it's not like the very first time that you do it is actually in front of a crowd of, you know, over a hundred people or whatever it was for us it was like people <laughs> around the globe. A <laughs> yeah. hundred people who we couldn't see, but we, we were imagining them that they were there. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. But they totally made themselves felt because co the comments were going nuts, which I, I'm so thankful for, yeah, you know? Yeah, that was so great. But you're so yes. right. Like taking that time and putting in that effort to recreate, just as you said it, Carrie, to kind of, re or to kind of create in advance as yeah. much of the real performance situation as yes. possible, especially when it comes to the technology, the gear. Absolutely. Like I even, I, the, the, one of the benefits of the live stream is that the camera only shows so much. So I had a little music stand, I had my props and my water <laughs> and, my tissue and my lip gloss i wouldn't and it was like oh. right here in front of me we wouldn't do that on the stage right no. <laughs> and so that was something we discovered and when we were doing the kind of practicing in advance yes. i was like oh look yes. the, uh, mm. the screen only shows up to here i can put stuff right down here <laughs> yes yes yeah, no, no, that, exactly. So definitely there are some perks in doing it as an online thing, <laughs> rather, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, I mean, the actual practicing, I mean, sorry, showing up to do that was also an opportunity to practice in front of one another, yeah. which to be honest, I actually found super scary. <laughs> <laughs> I know 
the first time we, we were we were like, okay, so let's do a song. And I was gonna do a song and I'm like, oh, what song should we do? I was trying to be all nonchalant, but I was like, let me choose the absolute easiest song that I know I can <laughs> sing well right now in front of Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> How funny is that? How funny is that we actually let those sorts of fears and intimidations come, you know? It's like we've decided to do this together. We obviously <laughs> we obviously can sing, like, you know, and I don't know say that arrogantly, doing, but, you know, we are voice teachers and we've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, was, I was like, this is so intimidating. But I just have to bite my tongue and just do it, you know? Oh my gosh, it's so true. We just have to push ourselves. But I think that's an important reminder that yeah. to remind ourselves that sometimes it, it is the situation that's making us have that intimidation and it's not yeah. our lack of ability, our oh, lack good. of worthiness, yes. our lack of preparation that's giving uh -huh, us that uh -huh. feeling. It can just yes. sometimes be the situation, you know, Absolutely. it's new. And, it's just Absolutely. there's one person on the screen listening to you and it's like yeah oh, that's this is right weird. that's right and she just happens to be a voice teacher too ah! <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> but you know because people will probably think because we are voice teachers um that we never get nervous or that we never feel like you know that we always feel completely adequate in ourselves <laughs> and it's just, i guess i'm just kind of again i'm inviting you behind the curtain and going no actually we can also be overwhelmed with fear as well we didn't let it overwhelm us but we definitely feel it but it's that whole case of feel the fear but do it anyway and getting used to the fear and kind of embracing mm -hmm. that this is a little this is a part of that little roller coaster of being yes. a performer and yes. that we expect it, we accept it, and we know it's part of the journey. Oh, those fears, that. those doubts. Yes. And yes. I, I have a question for you, Carrie, now that we're on this yeah. topic. Like, yeah. you know, I, I think those fears and those doubts, they mm -hmm. come in the form of messages to us. Like, mm -hmm. what, and I'm curious, what are your like specific, this is really behind the curtain, but like, what yes. do your doubts actually say to you? What are the things that, that get in your head? before a performance <laughs> what are your oh, fears look i think you know well thinking back to you know the first time i was going to to practice a song in front of you and the fear that i felt <laughs> it's definitely a feeling of you know is is she gonna think that i'm not good enough or 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 you know is she gonna <laughs> is um am i going to mess this up and and then she's going to be just so regretful that she decided to do this concert with me or, or, or you know whatever and again it's it's all this thing of i'm scared to embarrass myself i'm scared that i'm gonna mess it all up and i'm gonna be so humiliated and and, and all that sort of stuff and at the end of the day it is that that the deep question is i'm asking am I actually good enough, you know? And and that's when I really, you know, like, and this is, I mean, this is work that I've done on myself, like for so many years, you know what I mean? Of really just getting to the core of why do you feel that way? And it's when you tie your identity with what you do. So it's like, you know, because at the end of the day, we all have bad days and there will always be performances that we actually do mess up. I think that's actually also a part of the journey that we need to embrace, right? Um, but then it's the important thing is not that, hey, never, don't ever mess up. It's, it's, it's don't tie your identity to your mess up. So just because you might have failed, it doesn't mean you're a failure. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, I've gone through many years of working through that in my own identity where I have been able to get to a point where I've realized it's my identity is not tied with how well I sing, you mm. know? Um, and when you get to that point, yes, you will still feel nervous. You will still, those thoughts still come in. But now I can really much more quickly put, you know, go, no, that's okay. Even if I do mess this up, you know, it, it doesn't, it's not tied with my identity. I'm still enough. I'm still a mm -hmm. valuable human being. I'm still mm -hmm. loved. Um, and and I'm, I'm still a singer. You know, I'm still a good mm -hmm. singer, you know? Yeah. So that, that's that's what it is for me. How about for you, Kathy? Yeah. Oh, I, I love that. You know, like uh, our, our identity as a singer does not hang off of one song or one mistake yes. or even one performance. Mm -hmm. We have to look at the big picture of our journey as an artist and find the truth from there. And I, so I really resonate with that, Carrie. Our, our identity is beyond just yes. our singing as humans, yes. our value, our worth yes. on this face of the earth. Um, yes. And I think what, what I also do um, is I try to get back to 
why I want to do this. And sometimes I, I can really be like, why am I doing this? Why do I put myself through this? Because those doubts and fears are so uncomfortable when the nervousness, you know, it's, it's like, it can feel so yucky to feel that, but why am I doing, okay, why am I doing this? And I try to, I usually what I come up with as the answer to that question is I do it because I love to sing. Yes. I and I love to share a connection with other people through singing. And so right. in, in a way it's it's my love for those people that's kind of motivating yes. me because I want them yes. I just want them to enjoy and connect to something that I've got to share. And that all I need to really do at the end of the day is just be as authentic as I can. I don't have anything to prove beyond that. Yes. Oh, that is just so well said, Kathy. And and I can just really feel that it genuinely comes from your heart, from experience. And I love that so much. I love that so much. That's just gold there. Everybody take that piece of gold and put it in your pocket. It is just, it's gonna ser- it's gonna serve you very well. Um now Kathy, um I, I'm really curious, how did you feel on actual concert day? You know, like when you wake up that morning and it was like, Oh my goodness, it's happening. <laughs> yeah. How did I feel? Yeah. Well, I I definitely um, I definitely have a calm in the morning when I first wake up on a, on a yeah. show day, a performance day, when yes. the, cause for me it was evening when yes. we performed or yeah, late afternoon. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then I have a little bit of a roller coaster ride <laughs> of the nervousness yes. and last minute doubts, just all what we're talking about. Am I going to screw up? Am I really worthy to be here? Is everyone going to figure out that I'm actually a fraud and I, I'm not as good as they thought I was? Right. Um, and if you know, for me, Carrie, actually, I a lot of my nervousness or any kind of stress I feel, I t- it tends to go right to my voice. I, I yeah, feel it. Yeah, yeah, me you too. Know, I, I've never had back problems. I've never had shoulder problems or neck pain. I don't carry my stress too badly in my body, but yeah, I carry okay. it in my voice. And so on show day, I I was feeling kind of tight and like, mm. oh my goodness. But luckily, <laughs> it's a feeling I've had many, many times before. So it doesn't mm. freak me out. I right. go, okay, as usual, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Got the tension in the throat happening. Mm. Um, so, you know, I actually try... Um, I try not to use my my voice a lot. I'll kind of give myself some quiet time throughout the day, maybe once or twice, just go and sit somewhere quietly and just think through everything and calm myself down. Um, I'll do some warm, gentle warming up throughout the day to kind of just yep. check in with my voice, keep yes. keep checking in and being being in touch with my body. Just hmm. Ah, okay, where's my voice? Hmm, okay, it's there. Okay, good. <laughs> it didn't um, disappear overnight. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. Not that I'm worried that it would have disappeared, but just, yeah, like, it keep, yes. it's, yeah, I guess I guess that's a, a rational fear, but it probably is. Yeah. Is yeah. it there? Yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so checking in, checking in vocally, taking some quiet time here and there, still trying to get work done and the other things that I have on my on my agenda for the day um and then checking in with my husband as I said who Kevin who was doing the sound and and the setup for me we had a few little talks to just say okay so okay what are we going to do with this and am I going to be able to see the comments that the users are typing in or what are we going to put the computer on like just a few tiny little things even though, as we said, yeah. we really did run all of it in advance. Mm. That there still were a few tiny little things. Yes. Um, and then trying to also stay hydrated throughout the day. Yes. Yes. And then eating. I, I sort of have a point where I will not eat anymore before a show. I'm exactly the same. <laughs> so making sure I'm having some really healthy, non-irritating food right up until yeah. that point. Yeah. So What's I guess that point for my, you? That's my show day routine. What about That's you, Carrie? Good. Yeah, um, for me, for, so normally most of my performances would be at night mm. and I would be very similar to you. I'd be able to, you know, have a good sleep, wake up, I'm pretty calm and then the nerves come later sort of thing. But this time was completely different because for me it was a 12 p.m. show, right? Which So I went to bed nervous. <laughs> I'd, I didn't sleep much that night, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I was, oh and I was yeah. surprised. I was like, "Why are you? Why are you nervous, Carrie?" Like, you know. Anyway, but it was it was a 
it was a combination of excitement. Um, oh my gosh, it's actually happening tomorrow, you know? Can't believe this. Because it was such a surreal thing as well, especially with COVID and having not performed for so long. And then being able to do this with, with you, I was, I was actually quite excited about that. But yeah, no, no, I was a bit nervous, whatever. So I had a very restless sleep that night. <laughs> um, and then, you know, got up in the morning and definitely felt the same sense of nervousness and whatever. But similar to yourself, you know, I try, I, I preserve my voice, you know, before, before a show or whatever. I don't, you know, I'm not going to go and teach three students before a show or anything like that you know I kind of keep keep it so that I can actually be grounded and, and quiet so what I did was I, I woke up um, I had some journaling and quiet and prayer time in the morning I went out for a walk um, and then I had a very light breakfast so and and for me it's exactly the same as what you said I try not to eat anything about two hours before um, yeah and I usually don't want to to be honest the, the excitement and the nerves of a performance makes it loses my I don't I lose my appetite which is saying a lot for me because I really love to eat anyway <laughs> um, well, so I, yeah 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 um, and I definitely make sure I eat and drink stuff that's not going to irritate my throat as well so um, yeah I discovered the other day that I cannot actually have, you know, this really sort of thick sourdough bread just before a performance. Because yeah. for whatever reason, before a performance, I'll get something stuck in my throat and I'm like, it's that piece of bread. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> so anyway, I eat something that's just going to, is, is quite bland, you know, bland, but it's going to give me energy, you know, whatever. Um, and then I don't eat for, for at least two hours pre-show. Um, and I warm up my voice um, uh, you know, if we, usually when it's a night gig, I will do light warm ups through the day, and then just before, say an hour before the gig, I will do a proper, mm. robust sort of twenty minute warm up. Mm. You know, um, for for me that day it was twelve o'clock, so yeah, I did. Um, I pretty much did a full warm up. You know, um, yeah, just a full warm up, and then just pre show. Two minutes of straw, you know, straw phonation that always sets melt my voice in a good place. Mm. And I also did laryngeal massage, which is what I learned from the Syndaptive site. Yeah. Um, yes, you know, um, you know, just getting rid of any extraneous tension, you know, that's going to affect um, my throat. So I find that to be absolutely gold to to do the laryngeal massage. Um, mm. Yeah. So that's my pre-performance sort of prep I guess but um, yeah, yeah. I was basically all excited and nervous all at the same time you know and, and that's yeah. really normal isn't it yeah. <laughs> that's so normal uh, <laughs> so normal and I think like you um you mentioning the the, the straw phonation uh, and the laryngeal massage you know it's it's that idea that we need to take care of ourselves and set ourselves up for success whatever that yes. may mean that self-care that's right yeah, That's it right. can be different That's for right. every one of us, yeah. Yes, absolutely. And I think doing whatever you can to centre yourself before a performance is really important. So, and for everyone it's different. It, it could be a bit of journaling, it could be going for a walk, like I was saying, it could be doing some yoga, some breathing exercises. Um, for us, we, me and you prayed together before um, yeah. the performance, you know. Yeah. We, we prayed for ourselves, but we also prayed for our audience, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah right? And, and, it's and just that, so... that really helped us yeah. to... Yeah, just to, to feel to feel a connection um, with what is beyond us yes. and what what is our source and kind yes. of our our reason for being yes. here to connect yes. that whatever that is for you is yeah. just I mean you just can't I can't say enough how amazing it is mm. yeah yes so exactly so Kathy I'm curious yeah I mean you your performance was just so captivating and, and inspiring. Like after that, I went and I just re-watched your part, like I don't know how many times, and I'm like, I want to learn those songs that Kathy did. <laughs> and I started, you know, there's two of them that were my favourite, uh, which I'll tell you about in a minute, but what was your favourite part of, of, the, of the concert, you know, in, in terms of your own performance? Oh, good question. Um, hmm. <laughs> well, <clears throat> okay. Oh gosh, it's actually hard. I have a few. Okay, let me just think which one. Sure. Okay, I, 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 I'll say there, there's something I have not done very much in performance at all, and that is belting. I, I, yeah. I don't consider myself a belter at all. Right. And by belting, we're talking about that chest dominant mix, yes. that that cutting sound, that very exciting. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah that sound. Um, <laughs> And it's a very it's a very coordinated sound to do it healthfully and freely, and I'm a classically trained soprano, and I've sung a lot, yeah. also a lot of jazz and pop, yeah, where I'm using the head dominant yeah. sound. 
Yes. And so in um, in I know it's today. Yes. And there's this part where it goes, the waiting, the waiting. Oh, sorry, yes, the I love the that. Waiting, the waiting, the waiting, the waiting, the waiting. And I like belt it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and that was really one of the first times I'd actually belted in a live performance situation, like a, an actual belt. And it was a C really? sharp. Really? It was actually the highest note I've ever belted. Wow. <laughs> For me, I, that was I would never have known that. Like, I would never have known that that was your first time. No way. Well, I yeah, I, seasoned, I, I, seasoned I, yeah. belter. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really just started learning to belt about a year or two ago um, yeah. with another project that I was working on where I really had to kind of develop that that powerful side of my voice. And so it's very new. Yeah, and, and the C sharp is, I, I had sort of yeah. been belting it around as B and a C, but the C yeah. sharp yeah. is even higher. Yeah, so, yeah. so that was a oh. dance. A technical achievement for me vocally, yeah. That was my favourite performance of yours, can I just say. That was this perfect segue into me telling you that. Oh, thanks. That song, it just, uh, so I've been trying to learn that song, you know, and, and also I learned something about um, the, like when you sing a song for a stage and then when you sing it, you know, in a more intimate setting or whatever, and in our, in our case it was a live stream concert, it's actually um, – necessary to adapt the music and I realized that you had done that because the actual song the original is actually sung by three people and yeah. it's spanning three different timelines like a kid yeah and then a teenager and then the adult but you you totally adapted it perfectly for one person to sing it um and can I just say your belt was just pristine and oh, you're crazy. acting you're acting girl 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 like you just inspired <laughs> me I was like this, this, this is a true theater singer you are a true theatre singer and I just took so much away from your performance, Kathy, and I learned so much. Took notes, you know. Like, oh, my gosh. I want to be like Kathy when I grow up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, and I, I did adapt the song. I actually cut a section. I actually cut two sections of the song yes. out. It's actually yes. like a six-minute song. It's really yes. long. It's really long, um, yes. And so I sang the, the young Fiona section mm. and then the adult Fiona because it's three stages mm. of her life. Mm. Um and, um, you know, my, my, my friend and my accompanist, Christy, was actually a, a real great kind of artistic consultant on some of yes. the arrangement yes. stuff of what we did together. So that was, yes. that was really fun. I'm glad you liked it. Thank you. It was incredible. That was definitely my all-time favorite song of yours that day. I mean, I loved every song you did, but that one, I was just like, yep. She, she's on the money. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, I mean, speaking of belting, okay, girl. <laughs> Um, like, so I, I said this actually during the live stream to you, like after one right. of your um, amazing, all of your amazing songs, but the, the ones that really had that belting, like, it's so powerful to see yes. someone, well, to quote a song that you sang, living out loud, really oh. just letting it rip. Just yes. when you sense that the performer is letting go and just digging in. <laughs> And you did that so many times in the show, like many times. And and it just felt like you were going for it. And it's so um, exciting and powerful. So, yeah, I feel like I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what was your favorite moment of your performance? What are you proud of? Oh. Um, let's see. You know, I – look, I'm – I don't know. It's so hard to pick. Mm -hmm. So I realized I threw a pretty hard question on you. Um, <laughs> um, I think, um, look, I think I am going to say Defying Gravity was was definitely um, a, a favorite, you know, song because, I mean, it's, it's a very difficult song. So when I pull it off, I'm like both – relieved and elated and whatever all at the same time do you know what I mean mm. like because there's always this lingering will I mess this up you know am I going to do I have my you know how you said oh it was, is my voice okay today and, and you're like mm, mm, yeah yeah my voice is there well I I'm so fearful that I've lost my belt like on a, mm. you know on, <laughs> on a day of performance I'm like geez I really hope I still have the belt there you know um and it's not that we lose it it's just a fear and, 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 and that's a very normal fear and, I, and like you, I've felt it a million times. So I've learned to be able to say to myself, 
okay, this is really normal that you feel that way, but how many times have you done this? Oh, quite a lot. You, you know what you're doing. You've practiced it. You've done your best. You just surrender, you know? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think for, for me, this, the song Divine Gravity means a lot to me because it really does speak about, yeah. um, I guess, you know, and I'd, not so much defying gravity, gravity literally, but, you know, more about like, I don't know, like really seizing, seizing life and going, you know what? There are some things that really appear impossible, but maybe they're not impossible. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think we all face so many different situations like that. And, Mm. and, and I've had many of those sorts of situations in my life. And so it means so much to me. And so in terms of the belting, I have learned that it is more about a commitment to the feeling, to, to the intensity of the emotion than it is about having a perfect voice. Do you know what I mean? Amen. Obviously, you need to train. Obviously, you need to train. I mean, it's it's a vocal athletic kind of thing that you need to learn to, you know, and that requires training. You don't just go do it because then you'll scream and you'll shout and you'll end up, you know, sort of pulling your voice and, and, and getting really husky or whatever afterwards mm-hmm. or, you know, all that. But at the end of the day, once you've done all the proper training and everything, it is such a, it's all about the commitment to mm-hmm. the emotion. It really is. And when you sing it from your heart, it will come out. Like that's that's what I've learned. But if you're all about, oh my gosh, this has to be perfect, and la la la, sometimes that's when you don't get it. I think people should be taking notes right now. That's one to write down, everybody. Yes, it's about the real emotion. At the end of the day, if mm-hmm. we do do the practice, we need to get ourselves coordinated, and we have to train ourselves so that we can call up these behaviors, vocal behaviors, at will. Yes. 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 But then, yes. in the moment when you're sharing with your audience, it's about the authentic emotion. Amen, sister. So true. Uh- <laughs> and well, when you think it's about it, like some of these really powerful sounds that we do in a song, in the most powerful moments, like that belt, it's like a call, um, or even like a soft whisper or a sob. These are like primal expressive gestures that we are wired to express. Our bodies are wired this way. So by tapping it, the true emotion behind it, it, we can trust that it'll lock in. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And the thing is like with theater singing, that is just crucially foundationally important you mm-hmm. know um, I once heard a story about um this uh, um, Broadway singer who had actually auditioned for Cats and mm-hmm. she sung it beautifully she was a she was a perfect belter it, it, it was so easy and she was auditioning for you know the, um is it Gris Bur- I can't remember her name <laughs> how do you say her name Gris Gris Barella or something like the main cat that sings memory anyway oh yeah her whatever. yeah something yeah like, no yeah if you know the name, please let us know. Anyway, <laughs> I've been so, in. yeah, you know, yeah. So yeah. And memory, yeah, that song. And she sang it perfectly. And then the audit, the people who were on the panel said to her, we need you to sing it again. And can you make it sound like it's harder for you to sing? Ah. Because she was playing a desperate cat. Do you know what I mean? Like how interesting is that? So it really does sort of bring forth again. It's the emotion. It's the intensity mm. of it that is so important. So for her, the audition with the perfect vocal didn't get her in. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> because because it didn't express the desperation of mm-hmm. the emotion of, of that the song. emotion behind it. Now I'm going to quote a voice teacher that I know. Um, uh, for, let me say the quote first. Uh, it's when it comes to performance, the goal is not perfection, the goal is connection, and that's oh. isn't that good. That's yes. a quote from Mark Baxter, who is a uh, really great and very experienced voice teacher and really inspiring person. And I love it. Wow. Oh, that's a fantastic quote. Yep, everybody write that down. I'm, yep. I'm, I'm gonna write that down. Not about Straight perfection, down. it's about connection. Yes. Connection, love it so much, love it so much. Um, now, Kathy, after the concert, um, did you go through any sort of process in your head or write, written down or anything, you know, sort of like evaluating it or thinking about what you would do better next time or just enjoying like what was your process after um my process after is always a slight roller coaster i will admit i have that elation uh, that it went quite well so i definitely like we did it (laughs) we did Um, it yeah, and, and also there's a little bit of that relief that it's done. Yes, we finished. Yes. We did it. It's, it's over. Whew. Um, so there's definitely that high. I, I always have a high. And then immediately after that high, I tend to crash. 
um, yes. I tend to have a little bit of like, oh, was it actually good enough though? Mm. It wasn't actually perfect. You know, <laughs> so in when we're performing live and in the moment, I really do feel I'm, I'm able to kind of enter into that authentic place where I'm Great. I'm just sharing, I'm just yeah. I'm being me, just mm. doing what I've done and sharing from my heart. But then I doubt it afterwards. But did I, did, did people like it? And, you know, invariably there are little little moments that maybe don't come off as well. You know, little, yes. little tensions that are, that are in the voice mm -hmm. that I certainly grapple with in performance yeah. when I'm a little bit nervous, where I feel like a note wasn't as free yes. sounding as it was yes. in my rehearsal, gosh darn it. Um, so then they start to pick everything apart. Um, but in terms of like reflecting on what we might've done differently, um, hmm. That's interesting. I, I think I had things that I thought we would definitely do the same. Yeah, like I, okay. I, I definitely reflected how amazing it was to share the yes. stage with another performer, but share yes. the virtual stage. Like yeah, that we went back and forth. That was yes. because it's a virtual concert. You can't see any of the audience, although the, no. the comments were just amazing and people clapping yes. for us with their emojis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> to know that. I could see you and you could see me the whole time. Like, that was so neat. I thought to myself, let's do this again. There, there's no better oh. way to do a virtual concert than with another person, yeah. I think so. And and I realized that, you know, I mean, the joy of performance is, as you say, like what you were saying, talking about before, connection, right? But the joy doubles when you share the stage with someone else. Honestly, I really felt that for the first time this time, Yay. with you know, doing this with you. I just thought, yeah. especially sharing it with someone like you that I have always admired and we have worked hard together on other things, like completely yeah. other things, I mean, obviously to do with voice, but more yeah. educational. And this time it was completely yeah. creative and we actually got to know each other in a completely different way as well. I really feel like this took our friendship to another level. We yeah, weren't totally. just colleagues anymore, you know, <laughs> which really, well, again, it was connection for us as well, you know. Yeah, um, yeah so but I, I totally agree with you. Like the joy doubles when you share the experience with someone else. So anyone out there, if you're thinking of performing and, and one of your things is you're fearful because you don't want to be on your own, go and do it with someone else. <laughs> you know, that's a really quick way of being able to have someone that's just on your side, supporting you all the way through and, and you're going to do this together. You're going to go through all the highs and the lows together, you know? <laughs> yeah, so true. And and even having the, the person who's in the room with you, both of us had our piano players with us in the room. Yes. And, yes. and that's they're also on the journey with us. And the yes. audience gets to see that and feel that. So Absolutely. you have the singer and their musical partner on stage. And then you have the other, the other singer sharing the virtual stage so we just we had all that connection and we were all four of us were yeah. excited about it and and yes. feeling joyful about the connection yes. and I think, yeah, that came across to the audience yeah that's awesome yeah and what about um, you Perry? Hmm. Oh, for me um post yeah, show, for yeah. Me, yeah post show i i tend to not allow myself to get critical so mm. what I, I mean i i felt the complete cloud nine experience where you know we was just so, we did it kathy oh my goodness we did it and it was yeah. a fantastic experience it was honestly much better than i thought because i thought as a live stream i don't know if i'm going to feel the same feelings but mm. i did i actually did all the nerves were there all the excitement was there but also all the joy and the elation was also there um and that's you know kudos to the over 100 songbirds who actually showed up live um you know and were just commenting and encouraging us that was amazing wow. um but yeah I think at the end of it, I knew that overall it, it had been an, a sensational show. And I'm not saying that arrogantly. I'm just, that's just authentically. I knew that we had connected. We had connected mm. with everyone. People loved it. They told us that. Um, and I and I chose to stay on that. Do you know what I mean? Yes, there were things I wish I could have done better. De definitely technology-wise, I would totally do it differently in terms of cameras and things like that. Um, but, and, and yes, there were definitely, like there were moments where I definitely lost the words and I made stuff up. So let, that's just me being real. <laughs> I was like, I think I was singing verse three lyrics in verse one and verse one lyrics in verse two. I was just like, whatever, blah, 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 just let it come. Yeah, <laughs> like, I did that like, too. Just, I did it too. Yeah, just just being real, you know. Like I literally lost the words at one point and um, had to really go. What other words? What other words? You know. But at the end of the day, I knew that we had delivered a joyful experience, mm. and from that point, I was happy. I'm like, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter the little things that kind of 
you know, kind of went, might have gone wrong. Yeah, I could do a vocal analysis on my technique. <laughs> but what would that do? So I, I'm, I, I must say that's something I don't allow myself to go into. Mm. However, you know, the low you were talking about, I feel that very much the day after. So or maybe, maybe two days later. So I always feel this. After a performance, zoom, you're like up into cloud 99. And you're, <laughs> oh, you're, you're like up there for so and, – and then the adrenaline comes down and that's actually a physical chemical reaction or whatever. It's, it, it's you know, and then I actually yeah. have a day where I feel quite depressed. <laughs> like not depressed but just yeah. – I'm, I'm just a bit low, you know. Yeah. I get a bit lethargic. I'm a bit whatever. Yeah. But I know now that that's normal. For mm. a poor performer, yeah, because that that adrenaline rush is real. It's it's so much, and you feel, and then it's got to come down because you can't be up there for, forever. That's just not the way we were created as human beings. Um, and so I feel the low two days later. Like mm -hmm. I just kind of go, oh, I'm a bit tired and a bit uh, right now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of the way it goes for me. Um, but I've got to say, I was so inspired by our thing that I decided I, I need to do this again first of all with you at some point so let me just say that just put it out there right now that we've got to do this again at some point but Agreed. it also inspired me to do this in person with with another singer in Melbourne so um I am hoping to put on a concert this year you know mm. with someone else though you know and I've never done that before you know I've done my own concerts but never with yeah. someone else. so it, it really did inspire me onto Yay. you know other things as well and, and that's always the thing about collaborations, you know, creative collaborations always lead yes. to more ideas and yes. to new places. And oh my yes. gosh, Carrie, your audience is in for such a treat for this concert oh. in the future that's coming up. I'm definitely going like, to want a recording of it. So be sure oh, to Oh, thank it. you, Kathy. I, I just love it. And so, hey, we're going to wrap up this conversation because yeah. it's sort of going beyond, um, you know, the time that we had, we had thought it would because it was such a good chat. We could chat forever. Yeah. I know we could. Um, and thank you to those who have joined us. Um, but um, Kathy, just thank you so much again for, you know, being a part of um, this chat today. But of course, for saying yes when I said, hey, do you want to put on a live stream concert? Because mm -hmm. um, it was one of the most magical experiences of my life. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I really want to thank you for that. You're oh, best. my gosh. <laughs> well, you are so welcome. And I would love to do work on any pretty much any project that you're working on Carrie I'd love to join you like if you're you know fixing a car and you need a hand like just whatever <laughs> um and I, I agree it was a mountaintop for me as well you know the it mountaintop was. experience as yeah. they say absolutely yes. one of the highest <laughs> mountaintops yes. of my life as well and yes. I, I really do think your your incredible incredible positive energy carry is just such a blessing and such a huge reason why it was so lovely so thank you oh, thank you kathy so much so guys can i just say please go and check out kathy's work follow her go and check out singdaptive.com follow um, her on instagram at singdaptive and kathy.com Ali? Yeah. <laughs> on Insta? Alexander, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, yeah, it's fantastic stuff that Kathy's working on at the moment to help singers. Um, you know, the Sing Adaptive's just got incredible content that you need to get your hands on. Some of that content um, I'm actually a part of. Which some is of that really, content really nice. and so part of why it's so great is because Carrie contributed some of it. So there we go. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Kathy. You're so <laughs> kind. Um, but seriously, everybody, um, after we finish this chat, you need to go and check out Kathy at Singdaptive and also on her Instagram. So again, thank you, Kathy. Everybody, please give Kathy a round of applause and and you know just your most um, kindest words and of encouragement because we have loved having you um, on this live tea time together. It has been incredible. Thanks so much, Kerry. Thank Always you, and we'll, we'll see you around next time. All Bye. right, see you next time. Bye, Kathy. Wow, well, what an incredible chat that was, guys. Thank you so much. Hey, Bill, I'm glad that you were able to make it. Now, Singdaptive, oh, hey, your guys were on, Kathy. A question we've heard from singers doing live streams, how do you balance when to interact with audience comments and when not to? Oh, geez, I'm so sorry that I've already said goodbye to Kathy. But um, um, we, for, for us, we decided to not read any comments while we were performing because obviously we didn't want to be distracted while we were performing. We wanted to be 100% in the moment. And then when we finished our sets, we would then quickly scan through the comments and either type in some response or even just respond um, very quickly in between uh, verbally. So that's how we sort of, um, yeah. 
Kathy is amazing. Bill, go and check her out. Thank you, Sue Grisbarella. Grisabella. I can't say this name. Grisabella. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so Bill's saying thank you to you, Kathy, and Sue as well. Um, now, let me tell you real quick about next week's live stream. Next week's a really exciting one. It's a Songbird Spotlight. That's when I bring on one of my incredibly talented students who are actually out there in the field. They're releasing music professionally, um, and I bring them on for an interview, and also they get to perform a few of their original songs. So Ted Carpenter, he's the king of soul. He has released an album, and we are going to be – getting to know him more and having him perform for us. So make sure you don't miss that one. The link is coming up below. It's also in the description box. So make sure you click on that, set yourself a reminder and don't miss it. That's next week's live stream. Um, awesome. And again, go and get my free um, mixed voice uh, mini course at the link below. Songbirds, it's just been such an incredible time with you today. I hope that you always know that I am always believing in you. So why don't you get it out there, get grounded, take flight and sing and I shall see you at the next live stream. Bye.